All right, good afternoon, everyone. So with it being kind of a short week this week, we're gonna do something kind of fun. Um, I was asking if anyone has ever worn a wig or a hair piece or knows anything about them, ever tried to style one? No. Oh, you have? How did that work out for you, Jocelyn? Oh, and Lorena too? Did it work out good or was it kind of like different? Sorta, so-so? <laughs> yeah, they are different because, you know, it's not on a head, right? And a lot of times the composition of them are a little bit different. So we're going to talk about those today. Um, we are on kind of a short week, so um, we're just going to kind of have some fun this week and um, see what we can come up with. So I am going to uh, show you a video right now on just wigs and some hair pieces, and then we'll, we'll talk about them. So give me a second to get this up. share the screen and let's make it bigger why isn't it there it is in this chapter the two objectives you'll focus on are wigs and hair additions there are many applications for wigs and hair pieces but in general terms, a wig is designed to cover the entire head, while a hairpiece is designed to cover a specific area of the head. For as long as history has been recorded, wigs have been a part of the story. It is believed that the early Egyptians used them to protect their heads from the sun. The Romans and Greeks also wore them, depending on the fashions of the moment. Later in the Elizabethan era, the aristocracy sported curled wigs generously studded with precious gems. Over time, wigs grew in complexity and height, as with this wig, which was popular at the time of the French Revolution. During the 1950s and 60s, wigs and hair pieces took a giant leap in popularity, thanks in part to the development of synthetic fibers known as acrylics, which made mass production and lower prices possible. Actors and actresses have always worn wigs. Today, the beautiful actress Raquel Welch not only wears wigs, she has successfully endorsed a complete line of them. Wigs are available in 70 standard colors, which are displayed on a J and L ring. This is the standard hair color ring used by wig and hairpiece manufacturers. Wig construction falls into two general categories, cap and capless wigs. Cap wigs consist of an elasticized mesh fiber base to which the hair fiber is attached. Capless wigs have rows of hair wefts sewn to strips of elastic. Hair and or synthetic fibers can be attached to the wig cap or base by hand or machine, or they can be semi-hand tied. A hand tied wig or hair piece is produced by actually hand tying strands of hair into a fine meshwork foundation. Patterns are used to simulate natural growth patterns with a density of a fairly thick head of human hair. Since this process is labor intensive and time consuming, these wigs tend to be the most expensive. When helping your clients select a wig, keep in mind that the wig's construction is significant in determining the best value in the client's price range. Capless wigs or caps that allow the scalp to breathe prevent excessive perspiration that may cause odors. These wigs need to be cleaned less frequently. Many wigs have flesh-colored sections designed to look like human skin. This gives a realistic look when the hair is parted or moves. Most clients, of course, desire as natural a look as possible. To perform a professional wig service for clients, it requires a selection of products, implements, and equipment. 
Since the majority of WIG services are performed on a block, safety concerns are somewhat minimized. Discretion is key in WIG consultation, so make the client feel comfortable and safe, and be prepared to be sympathetic and emotionally supportive. Wigs may be custom made or ready to wear. Services include wig measurement and fitting, instructions on how to put on a wig, as well as blocking, cleaning, cutting, coloring, and styling wigs. The comfort of any wig depends on proper measurements of your client's particular head size and shape. Brush the client's hair as smoothly as possible. Then measure the circumference of the head, beginning at the hairline in the middle of the forehead. Circle the entire head, running the tape just above the ears, around the back, and returning to the starting point. Measure the distance from the hairline at the center of the forehead to the nape hairline. Measure the distance from temple to temple, just above each ear, over the crown of the head. Measure from just above each ear and over the occipital bone. Some manufacturers may also request that you measure the distance from ear to ear along the nape hairline and also the width of the nape hairline. It is important to teach your client the easiest way to put on a wig. She'll be more comfortable wearing it and it will avoid frustrations. Brush the hair back from the face and up from the back hairline, then pin to secure. Longer hair can be swept up or secured in large flat pin curls. Cover the client's hair with a fine net or wig cap to control the hair. This also helps the wig stay more securely in place. Use the tail of the comb to tuck in any stray hairs while making sure the cap does not cover the client's ears. You may use a hairpin to secure any excess fabric, flattening it to the head shape. Now place the front hairline of the wig over and slightly lower than the client's front hairline. Have the client hold the front in place while you position the wig over the sides, back, and nape. Adjust the wig perimeter to better fit the client's head shape and hairline. Many wigs are made with wire at the sideburn area for this very purpose. Wig blocking is necessary whenever the wig is cleaned or styled. Canvas-covered wig forms called wig blocks are manufactured in a variety of sizes to maintain the wig's original size. After selecting a canvas block in the correct size, cover the block with clear plastic. Then secure the plastic tightly with wig pins to protect the canvas during services. Place the wig on the canvas block and secure it with wig pins at the center front and both temples. Also secure the center and corners of the nape. You may need to do some additional cutting on a pre-cut wig, especially in the fringe and front hairline areas, so that it perfectly suits your client. Here, a notching technique is used to shorten the fringe while maintaining a soft, variegated texture. Thinning or tapering may also be performed closer to the hair ends as needed. Note that a chin strap helps hold the wig in place during this part of the service. Back combing the front hairline of the wig can help to soften the hairline and create a more natural look. Proper fitting and styling result in a beautiful natural look that is comfortable and easy to wear. Hair pieces are worn for coverage in specific areas or simply to create particular effects. See your textbook for more information on a variety of hair pieces and their functions. 
Toupees are hair pieces designed specifically to cover balding areas. Most toupee manufacturers require that the stylist submit an impression of the client's head, which requires accuracy to create. To create this impression, place a length of clear plastic wrap over the client's head from ear to ear. Twist the ends until the plastic wrap molds tightly to the head. Create an outline of the intended shape of the toupee by placing tape over the plastic parallel to and slightly beyond the area of hair loss. Make sure that the tape adheres smoothly. Now apply overlapping pieces of plastic tape within the outlined area. Then apply plastic tape in the opposite direction to make a crisscross pattern. Create a complete cap with a crisscross tape. Continue molding the tape to the head. Once the impression is complete, use a felt tip pen to indicate the exact size and shape of the toupee. Extend the line to cover the bald area. It is advisable to extend the pattern half an inch over the hairline. This ensures that the client will still be able to wear the toupee if his hairline recedes further. After identifying the crown cowlick area, carefully draw a part where one is desired and indicate the hair growth direction on either side of the part. Remove the taped form and carefully trim the excess. Tape the underside if necessary. Then clip hair samples from behind the ear and at the nape and tape them to the impression. This guides the manufacturer to blend the right color for your client. Yeah. Clients who wear toupees need your continued expertise. Sculpting and blending with the client's own hair is absolutely necessary, as are regular haircut appointments to maintain correct hair length. Okay. So, I got a, cute, a few little um, fun facts here. Bought some wigs. Okay. So, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, wig has been a word for a kind of bun or a small cake made of fine flour since the 14th century. On Good Friday in 1664, Samuel Pepys recorded in his diary home to the only lentil supper I have had of wigs and ale. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. Wig is short for periwig and has only been used for artificial hair since 1675. The ancient Egyptians around 350 BC wore wigs to cover their heads, which had to have been shaved to be free of vermin. Mozart wore a wig to cover a deformity of his left ear. Queen Elizabeth I, who, who's, not, who's got their phone handy? It's not on their phone right now. Could someone look up when, what year Queen Elizabeth I um, was reigning? Because it says that she owned 150 wigs. And I'm thinking that this was a really, 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 really long time ago. So, you know, what year was that? Fifteen fifty-eight, eighteen oh five. Well, we got two. We got the Queen Elizabeth the First Junior. Um, 
yeah, 150 wigs. What would she need that many wigs for? Crazy, right? So the word big wig, 1572, <laughs> educated guess. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I mean, like 1500s, we'll say, right? 1558, 1572, that's 20 years of just more or less. So yeah, she could have been around there. 150. It's crazy. Okay, the word bigwig comes from an old tendency for the most important officials to wear the biggest wigs. In 1765, wig makers marched through London to present the king with a petition demanding that certain professions should be forced to wear wigs. They were beaten up and shaved bald by rioters, angry that the wig makers were not wearing wigs. <laughs> Crazy, right? And then more wigs were made for the Lord of the Rings Twin Towers, or the Two Towers, than any other film so far in history. So there's some little interesting tidbits and fun facts there about wigs. So there's a few other things that we probably need to know about them, other than, you know, history. Um, we watched the video, right? So that was telling us that throughout history, people have been wearing wigs, which we know that. I was watching a show last night where they were all wearing wigs and they weren't on very good because they were those white powdered wigs. And uh, you could see their hair underneath it. So they did use some type of a powder to powder those wigs. I had heard somewhere that they had used arsenic but then when I looked it up this morning, it was some other kind of a starch flower. So that one was a little different arsenic. I think a lot of people probably would have died, huh? So the way wigs are made, right? This is gonna make a difference in the way that they cost. So you've got, you know, your human hair, you have synthetic hair or blend. Sometimes they blend those together. Um, and some of the synthetic ones are actually looking a lot more like real hair now, where they're saying European is the most class costly. Um, generally, when we, when we get our doll heads and things like that, they're either Chinese or Indian. Uh, China or Chinese hair has very straight hair, where India, Indian hair is more uh, weighty. So these, this hair is treated. Um, now I know that you can get some, some hair from like Malaysia, you can get it from Brazil. They have lots of different places that you can get hair from now. But those were the main ones there when all, you know, for a while was coming from me. Um, of course, human hair costs more, right? Does anyone know what rimmy hair is? If you ever go to buy hair, you'll see what a lot of times it says it's rimmy hair. Anyone have any idea what that means? No, that means that the cuticle of the hair. So, you know, if you cut the hair and it falls on the floor and you just like scoop it up and then you take it and you go make hair, you know, wigs, hair, strands, wigs and things out of it. It could be coming straight down off the head like it does this way or maybe it's going the other way. Maybe the ends are, you know, on the scalp part. So Remy hair just means that the cuticle of the hair is all going in the same direction like it would growing off of your head. So what that means when you go to buy hair is that it is, um, it'll last longer, it'll be easier to comb, it won't tangle as much if you do get Remy hair. And that is a little bit more expensive, of course, because it is, it's Remy hair. So with the way that these things are made, you know, you can have your cap or you can have your capless. You can have a cap wig of Remy hair that's hand tied and it's gonna be a lot. One of the, uh, wigs this morning, an older wig that was worn by Andy Warhol, was auctioned for $10,000. Could you imagine $10,000 on a wig? Um, and it was already used. <laughs> but, you know, you can pay, like, I, I've seen wigs that cost like $1,500, you know, for a wig. Um, you know, but five, you know, four, five, six, seven hundred dollars is, is to get a good quality one. That's going to be probably in your ballpark range of what you're going to be paying if you're buying one custom made for you. Um, a lot of times they, they do run a lot. 
right? So they can hand tie, the, hand tie the hair on there, they can sew it on there, you know, they can do both. So another type of fiber that they have that they make hair out of is a synthetic. Synthetic wigs usually cannot have heat put to them like a curling iron. If you're going to style them, it's usually more you get it wet, you roll it on a roller and you let it dry. And that's how you're gonna be styling it. They usually melt when it comes to heat. Um, if, sometimes you can use a real low level like flat iron or curling iron, but it's only about like 300 degrees. Um, anything more than that, they will melt. The synthetic hair has a tendency to tangle really bad and like get matted together. So uh, you do have to be careful when you're you're sewing or um, I mean not sewing when you're picking synthetic or you know natural hair um, right now with Halloween well are we gonna have Halloween um, <laughs> with Halloween wig sales always kind of went up because you know Halloween costumes um, and a lot of them were very you know synthetic hair and uh, you know I mean what were they like twenty bucks at Party City or something like that so. You know, those definitely were not high quality wigs. But a lot of times too, when you buy one, you're gonna have to like cut it or fit it to the client's head or your, your own head. Um, if you're gonna be cutting like bangs or, you know, giving it layers or whatever you're going to be doing, you wanna make sure that the client's wearing it. Okay, because remember, you got to make sure you're cutting it perfect. It's not going to grow back. You cut wrong one little cut and you're going to be mad because there's no way to put it back. Um, another thing, too, about coloring the hair. A lot of times people will buy, you know, hair pieces or a wig and think that they're going to, to be able to bleach it or color it or something like that. So there's this JNL color ring, that's what they call it when you're buying wigs. The wig itself, or natural hair color, has, there's 77 colors on this JNL color ring, and that's natural hair colors. So you should be able to match your own hair color pretty good. But let's say you've colored your hair and you want to match the hair color that you've put on there. Um, make sure that you know how this hair has been processed because sometimes they're not using hair color now, they're using like carpet dyes or fabric dyes to add color to the wigs and hair pieces. And once they have the carpet dye or the fabric dye, you're not going to be able to put hair color over it or remove it with hair color either. So make sure that you're fully aware if these you know, hair pieces are dyeable or not, because we wanna make sure that that happens. So um, with the synthetic hair, if you're not sure if it's synthetic hair, like you go like, oh, I don't know if it's synthetic hair, or I don't know if it's real hair. Hey, anyone ever smelled burned hair or like burned their hair, right? You know what it smells like? It's pretty stinky, right? So the synthetic hair won't burn. It doesn't have an odor to it, okay? It'll burn. I mean, it's, I'm not gonna say it won't burn because it will burn. It actually burns faster than real hair does if you can believe it, because I thought real hair burned pretty fast. But the synthetic hair will actually burn faster and it won't have a smell. So that's one way to tell if it's a synthetic one or if it's a, a real hair. Because sometimes the synthetic is made really good and like you can't tell the difference. Uh, except if you go to curl it, you know, it'll melt. Or if you burn it, of course, <laughs> burn it. So when I was like in second grade, I'll never forget this as long as I live. And look, I, it was so dramatic to me then that I could still like close my eyes and picture it. This fireman comes into our classroom, okay? And he has this like little onesie, you know, like little sleeper pajama thing, you know, that zips up, you put your feet in it, you know, it's got little feety pajamas and stuff. And um, it was when they started making this uh, synthetic fiber uh, pajamas for kids. And he was doing the safety talk on us about if we were wearing this type of pajamas that we needed to stay away from the, the fireplaces and the, and the heaters because these pajamas catch on fire really easily. So he was holding it up like this on a hanger and I don't know what he used to light it with, but he took the whatever it was and put it on the bottom and this thing just goes poof, like up in flames, okay? I mean, I was seven or eight years, I was probably eight years old. So it, it was very dramatic because I still remember it scared me to death. 
you know, and then he was showing us how to use the fire extinguisher to put out the fire and all that. But he was saying that what was happening was some kids, you know, were getting burned because they were getting too close to the heaters and stuff and it would just start to melt and just burn them. Well, that's what your hair will do. You know, if you get too close to the fire and you have the synthetic wigs, I mean, your own hair will burn too, but this stuff will burn faster and it'll burn, um, I don't know if it's hotter, but quicker, exactly a lot quicker. And it starts to melt and it'll burn. And those kids were getting burned, you know, and getting hurt because that stuff was like stuck on their, their arms and legs and stuff like that. So um, that's what I always think of when I'm told about the synthetic wigs because I was a little dramatic, especially when you're like eight. Freaked me out a little bit. No, it freaked me out a lot because I still talk about it and remember it. And that was a long time ago. So learning how to or knowing how to pick the hair knowing how to um, check if it's machine made or hand tied and what type of construction is going to help you be able to pick what's best for your needs or your clients needs or help them pick what's best for their needs so we always want to make sure that we're sanitary when we're doing this there's you know no way that we want to do something and not be 100 percent uh safe right we want to make sure that we're safe no matter what we do we always want to be safe so if we're going to help our client measure their head let's say that they want to have a custom order mail order type of a wig and they don't know if they should get like you know what size there's things to do now some of you have you know like little brothers and sisters and stuff like this and um or your parents and you know you want to make sure that you're going to get the right kind of cap. This right here, when I did have this done to me, this is how I found out I have a really big head compared to most people. My head is like an inch bigger than most people. And this is how I measured my head for like a wig. And this is how I found out that my head was big. Okay. So the first thing that you want to do is get their head. use this head that we styled last week. We're going to get their head. And we want to measure around the head. So the first measurement is going to be, put this up just a little bit higher. There we go. The first measurement is going to be like at the front hairline. And then it's going to go around over at the top of the ear here. So we want to go around the top of the ear and right where the occipital bone is. The occipital bone is that bone that if you reach in the back of your head right here, you can feel it kind of sticking out. Um, you want to go right below that and then the same thing on the other side. So if we start with the tent measure, let me place it like right here on the head, go around the ear. Below the occipital bone, start below it, up in the ear, and come back up. This doll head is about 20 inches around. So the average person is about 22 inches going around their head like that. I think I was like 23 and a quarter or something like that. I think my head's big. So the average person is going to be about 22 inches. Then you want to go from the back hairline to the front hairline, just right down the center. So you put the back hairline here, or the front hairline, all the way to the back hairline. This one's about 13. So everyone else is going to be just a little different. Right on the top of the ear, about the temple area. Across to the other side at about the temple area. And this doll's about 12 inches. Okay. And then right up in the back, we want to go from the top of the ear to the top of the ear all the way across the back where the head is the widest. And this doll is about 10 inches. Okay, that's how you would measure if you were going to help a client, you know, order a wig or even have one custom made for them. Um, that's how you would measure the head. Now, if we were actually going to make this custom made for the client, I would totally make sure that I did this really, really like accurate. But I was just kind of showing you how they, how they measure when they're measuring for wigs. Okay, so those are some of the measurements that they do take. So if you want to have some fun today, measure somebody in your house and 
kind of get an idea and see what that's all about. So I know that this is a little bit of a short week. So one of the little fun things that you can do is make a wig. And this actually, I want you guys to get creative with this. I want you to think about like, what's your house, um, all different types of things. So take some surround wrap, unless you have like that frosting cap that we've used. I don't know if you still have it or not. And take a piece of saran wrap and put it lengthwise around that the head. Get it kind of long because actually first you want to go this way. So put a little, you know, put it right here on your doll head and pull it all the way down to the in like the bottom of the, the doll head. So make it long, you know, down to here. If you don't have the frosting cap. Then take it from the other side and do the same thing and make it go across the head this way. So the first one's going to go front to back. The other one's going to go from side to side. Put it across this way. Make it kind of long so you can tie it like underneath the chin and get it on there tight. You're going to pull it tight. Then you're going to take some tape. And um, I just used duct tape. Kind of got started on one earlier to show them. I just used some Dollar Tree duct tape and just go around the head and then just like crisscross like they showed you in that video. This was my friend. And then get creative. Use whatever you have at your house. I had some yarn here. So I took some hot glue, my hot glue gun. I put it up here um, and then I took some yarn and I just put some yarn on here and I was starting to make hair. This was gonna be my hair, okay, so. You can get creative with whatever you have at home. I've seen some really cute ones where they like braided a bunch of yarn and put like a braided headband and twisted it up, curled it, whatever you want to do with yarn. I've seen it done with tinsel, Christmas tinsel. Um, I've seen it done with cups, cut up like pieces of plastic cups. Um, whatever you can think of at your house. Earlier, Junior was showing us when he just went outside and got a bunch of leaves and put the leaves all over his dog had made the hair look like leaves and he kind of did you cut those leaves or did you tear them i don't know did something with the leaves sort of both and you know made it she looked like leaves all over her head so get a little creative with that but that's going to be your your assignment for the week now i don't expect you to do it in one night right so i'll give you till friday to send us in the pictures and if you really want to get creative, make it fit yourself, and take a picture of yourself with it on, because I really like those. I love seeing those. I think they're fun. I the like one them. I made with Miss Michelle is over there at, inside her classroom. Mm. Yeah. That's what I said. Mine was burgundy and black, and I remember she kept it. Okay. So that's what we're doing for the assignment for this week is to wear that or make that, but it'd be fun to wear it too, right? So get creative with that one because it's kind of cool. Okay, so now these hair pieces, they're a little different. Um, there's, there's a few different ones and I'm gonna pull up some pictures of them and show you the differences between some of these hair pieces. I remember my mom talking about, you know, like when she was in high school, and this was in the 60s, okay, that the girls were wearing wiglets because it gave them more hair and more height on the top. So let me pull that up and I will show you what a wiglet looks like. Let me get it up here really quick. We don't need to be on here anymore. So, hey, Miss Connie. Uh, uh, when it was talking about the uh, the chin strap, was it talking about the elastic piece behind the wig or? Um, the chin strap. Were they talking about when they were making it, or when you purchase it? Oh shoot! I didn't even catch that. I'm assuming making it. Because like, when they're making it, what the chin strap portion is going to do is just hold it on. You know, so it, it just makes it uh, stay, makes the plastic stay tight. 
so that it'll stay on their head so that they can actually get the right measurements. Right? Does that make sense? Because I don't think you're going to walk around on a wig with a chin strap on. <laughs> that would look kind of funny. <laughs> Oh. Hold on a second, guys. I'm just pulling up a few of these other ones just to give you some of the images of what they look like. There's like five, so I'm just kind of getting them all really quick. I'm going to just pull them all up really quick here. And then that way. Okay, one more. Let me pull this last one up here. Okay, so we have um, Okay, so the first one that we're going to talk about is a wiglet. Um, so remember wigs cover the whole head where hair pieces uh, where did it just go? Um, where hair pieces only cover certain areas of the head. We'll just get it back. There we go. Okay, so this is known as a wiglet. Not all of these are wiglets, by the way. So I'm going to show you the ones that are. The definition of a wiglet is a hair fiber usually six inches or less in length. So it's no longer than six inches in length. Attached to a round shape flat base. It's usually worn to create fullness or height at the top or the crown area of the head. So if you look at these, these are like six inches flat, you know, six inches flat. If you look at this design right here, this is capless. If you look at this design, this is cap, just because of the way that the mesh is inside. So if you look at the pictures here, I've got a spot in the wrong spot on my glasses. Um, if you look at the pictures here, see this is showing us that it's just adding that little fullness on the top. Notice they're usually like combs or little barrettes that are put in here to actually, that one's like a little barrette right there. These look more like combs to me. Um, this definitely is a comb. You just kind of hold it in with your own natural hair. Okay, so just gives you a little bit more height. See, these are combs to just kind of stretch across that area. Um, but they're six inches round or less just to give you the fullness on the top. And that's usually what they're worn for. So you can see that as hairstyles throughout history, um, this would be something that people would wear to get more height on the top. Also, let's say if your hair is starting to thin and you want it to look thicker, you know, this might be something that um, you would get, but they're not very long. Okay, six inches of hair, that's it. So you gotta think about how, how's I gonna integrate in with the hair that's already existing, right? It's only six inches. So what they're designed is to blend into the own, the, the wearer's own hair. So you do definitely, connect them to the person's own hair and integrate it in with that. So anyone ever seen one of these before or worn them? I can only see like a couple people. So 
just a thought or know anybody who has. I think it's fun when I go to like thrift stores or flea markets or something and I see hair, you know, pieces laying around. I always try to identify them. I don't know, it's weird like that, I guess. Okay, so that's a wiglet. The next thing that we're going to look at is a cascade. So this identifying factor is it is a long hair fiber attached to an oblong shaped dome base. The cascade is a hair piece worn to create bulk or special effects. Now notice that this gets attached where? I mean, where do you attach the set? Most of these people are showing us that it's attached from the crown to the nape or where these are attached to. Crown to the nape. They're long in the back. In the front, like these are like ponytails here, but in the front, usually your own hair is used for the front. If you look on the mannequin head right here, see it's just starting kind of like in the apex area there. So you use the client's own hair to add to that. This is fun. I've wore one of these before. I had super long hair. It was really fun to wear. And then my own hair just sort of pulled out there. So um, it was a fun thing to wear. See on this mannequin head how far back it goes. So your own hair would be here in the front. That I thought was a lot of fun. And it was kind of long. It was really long. Okay. So a fall. Uh, what did I do with the fall? Well, let's just put it right here. A fall. Okay, so a fall goes from the crown to the occipital, or it can go from the crown to the nape. It's usually a little bit longer also. And this is another one that's kind of like the cascade. Um, it just falls down the back. They're usually 12 to 24 inches long. And this is why it's called a fall and not a cascade because the cascade's not 12 to 24 inches long. But this will give you the illusion of having a full thick head of hair. Um, they have demi falls, they have three quarter, they're sometimes they're called three quarter wigs but the front of your client's hair can be used to incorporate in this so that it looks a little more um, natural. So that's, that's a fall. So a fall is 12 to 24 inches. A cascade's kind of like the same thing, but it's not quite as long. And they may use the same term for either one because sometimes it happens, right? So we go to a switch. A switch is a long piece of hair, just one. Um, it's usually mounted on a loop base and it's primarily worn as a braid or a ponytail. So you see these loop bases right here. So what happens is you take the client's hair and you put it into say a bun or a ponytail or something like this. And then you loop that around it and then the, the hair will just hang down the back and have like a longer, a longer ponytail. Sometimes you'll find them like this that have like a little pocket there. And that's when you take the client's hair and you put it into a bun and then it will have a drawstring like this, but it won't be so like rubber band. And you just secure this and pull that string tight so that it stays on the top of client's hair. Let me see if I see anything that looks like that. But most of these look just sweet. Yeah, we see her own hair here is probably inside in a bun, and then this is just hanging down. So you can get them curly, you can get them straight, you can get them in a lot of different colors. But um, yeah, I don't see what I was looking for. With the, they're all just pretty much loops. It's like a big ponytail holder right there, and it just holds right onto it. So, oh, there's the fall. So then we have a chignon. Chignon's a bun, basically. It's a bun. It's added to the back, to the sides, usually to the back and the sides only. 
Um, they're already preformed into, into specific shapes and are usually at the crown or at the nape. And as you see in a lot of these updos, these formal hairstyles, these people are wearing these things in their hair just to make it look thicker, like to have a lot more hair back in here. Um, that's why a lot of times in, in magazines and things like that, you don't really know exactly what the client has on their hair because what if they have a hair piece in there? You know, some of them are just like elasticized bands, like ponytails, you know, like the, um, not like what I'm trying to say, like a scrunchie that just has hair around it. And you just pop them right on. Okay. So that is known as a chignon. So <laughs> I actually know someone is Donovan bought a man bun uh, to put in his hair one time, which just ended up being a chignon. Uh, and yeah, so he had a man bun when he was done. I think this one right here is really pretty, that style, just the way they did that. But look, it's a hair piece. Oh, Walmart, it says. <laughs> I didn't know Walmart had hair pieces. So there's just a chignon in there that could actually be a man bun. And the last little piece is a curl segment. So the curl segments are just that. They're just little pieces of hair that are curly that you can put in with many different ways. Like this one right here, look at how this one goes in. This one actually has like a butterfly clip in it, just to clip in the back of your hair and, and give you some curls. That's actually like a chignon curl segment. You know, there's, there's different ones. Um, these types of combs right here, they were real popular. I don't know if you ever remember seeing these, but they would just attach hair to it and go right on. Your own hair was underneath it, so you never really saw it. Probably one you might be more familiar with is like this, because my little niece is a cheerleader and she has a whole bunch of those depending on what their outfit is <laughs> that they're going to wear. So there's quite a few of those, those different ones there. So these are the different types of hair pieces. Now these are pieces that are already made. These aren't like hair extensions. They're not like hair additions. They're actually just hair pieces that can be put on. There's different types of hair additions and things like that, but this isn't one of them. Miss Connie? Yeah. Uh, what's the difference between a hair addition and then the hair clips? Well, a hair addition would be like an extension, like hair extensions. Like you would put like individual strands and stuff on. Pieces are like actually pre-made for a specific like style or a specific way that you want to wear the hair. So, you know, like if I wanted to use the chignon, it would already come like a bun that I could put in my hair where if I put in like a hair addition, I would have to make the bun, you know, out of the hair addition. It doesn't already come like made that way for me. So that would be- Thank you. A little bit of a different, yeah, a different way. Um, okay, so it's 2.55. Let's go ahead and go on break. I will see you guys back here at 3.05. Okay, we're back. So, um, to talk about wig blocking, now it's a canvas covered block. Some of the insides of these blocks are like styrofoam. Um, some of the other insides of the blocks are like cork. And then I don't know what else they put inside of them, but you know, they're gonna have canvas on the outside and then you're gonna be able to like stick T pins in there to hold the wig on it. That helps for um, cleaning, cleaning after you've cleaned it, you know, after, oh gosh, I can't talk today. After you've, you know, shampooed it, you can put it on there for it to dry. Um, you can also use it for styling. I wouldn't do any cutting on there though. If you're gonna cut it, definitely make sure that the person's wearing it. These blocks, they come in a bunch of different sizes. Um, they have like a 20 inch, a 20 and a half inch, 21, 21 and a half, 22, and so on and so forth. And then they also have it in centimeters if that's more what you, what you like to um, go by is centimeters. They have it on that also. If you're trying to make the wig larger than 
you know, like stretch it out, put it on a larger block, right? If you're trying to make it smaller, then you put it on a smaller block. So as it dries, it will shrink. Okay, now there's also some other things Sorry about that, I lost you for a second. So um, going back to fitting or customizing the wig. Um, so they have the styrofoam heads that you can use also. Those styrofoam heads are fairly inexpensive. They're about five bucks, but you always wanna just make sure that you have those big long T-pins or wig pins as they call them to like hold the wig on there. There are some, anyone sew? Does anyone sew? Like sewing machine, make clothes, Samantha does, nice. No, okay. So you can make a, a tuck or a dart to actually make the wig fit someone better. And what this is, is a dart is an alteration that's taking the, it narrow, it narrows it down. So let's say that like behind the ears, it's a little bit baggy. You could make a dart, which is just a vertical up and down line. And what that's doing is it's making it more, more narrow so that it'll fit tighter, say, in the navy area. You can also do what's known as a tuck. And a tuck is if it's too long in the back. So let's say, you know, it goes way past their, their hairline, like almost to their shoulders. You can make a horizontal seam going across, and that's just going to shorten it up. So it just gives it a uh, little bit more of a, a custom fit for your client if you're helping them um, if, if you're helping them uh, pick out the wig. Anyone ever been into a wig store? I have once. Yeah. Did you like it? I saw a couple of people say yes. Was it cool in there or was it just like eh? I thought it was kind of interesting when I was in there. So it's actually kind of freaky to see all these like heads around with hair on it, but I thought it was kind of kind of cool too to go in there and, and look around. So there are other alternatives to hair besides wigs, hair pieces, and um, 
and uh, hair like extensions and things like that. Um, you know, there's a lot of money involved in some of this stuff because, you know, you always see a commercial or something like that when they're on there. But there are like just pieces instead of temporary wearing them, um, you can wear them for like up to two to three months. And I know two people who have done this and what they did, it was like a cap. It was like a little cap came down to about right here on their head. Um, and what they did, because this one lady, she had like this really super bald spot right back here on the back of her head, just shiny, like no hair there whatsoever. And she wanted to cover it. So she went and had this cap made. So what they did was they shaved her, they shaved the rest of her hair to about right here. And it's just shaved all the way down. Then they surgically glued this cap to her scalp. So then what happened as her own hair would grow out, the cap would become loose. So she just go in about every three months, I think it's about every three months, two months, and have them cut that off. And then they would take it and clean it and you know, restyle it for her and everything. And then they would glue the she had bought two of them. So she they cut that one off and prepare that one for the next time she'd come back on. Then they'd glue this one other one back on her head. So she had two different hairstyles that she could wear. She had to wear it for about three months and it covered up her spot. And if I did not know that she had that shiny, you know, patch of skin on the back of her head that she had a big bald spot, I would have never ever guessed that she was wearing something that was not her own hair. That's how good it looked. Um, I know another woman who was real thin, like right here in the front, like you could see the scalp, like super thin. She basically got the same thing done, but what they did was they left like an uh, opening on the top here and they would take like a frosting hook and pull her own hair and integrate her ho own hair through that. It's called like integration. And it looked totally natural too. It was highlighted and everything just like her hair. I mean, it was super nice. So that is an alternative, um, something that you don't have to take off and put on like every single day. Um, these are worn for like three, but I think it's about three months. So your hair grows out and it, you know, it gets loose, right? Because it's glued onto your scalp, your hair is going to grow out, it's going to push it away and it gets loose. So those were some other options. There are some other types of options out there to help grow hair back. One of them would be um, some topical treatments, some like ointments or creams or something that you would rub on the hair. And what they're designed to do is stimulate your hair follicles that have went to sleep, you know, before they were supposed to, right? They come in shampoos, serums, conditioners, even styling products. A minoxidil is one that's, you know, labeled for men. And then they have a, also have a minoxidil that's labeled for women, but for some reason it's not as strong as the men one. It's labeled for men, labeled for women. Um, Nioxin looks like Nixon, it's N-I-X-O-N. They make a, a whole kit and things like that for just people who are, are thinning. Um, Nioxin was made, or I don't know if it was made, but one of the formulations was for uh, people who are going through chemotherapy and were told that they were going to lose like all their hair uh, to use this nioxin and not all of their hair would fall out. And it came with a little uh, like strainer that you would put in your drain so you could see just like how much hair was lost. And it came with a, a shampoo, a conditioner, and a little bottle of this treatment that on the thinning areas you would kind of just put this like liquidy, almost like a kind of a runny gel type thing. And you would put it on the head and you'd rub it in the scalp. And what that would do is um, stimulate, you know, the hair follicles so that your hair wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't lose your hair. Well, I remember using it and it, you know, it came out really fast. It was really liquidy and it kind of ran down the forehead here. And there was like a line where it ran down because it was stimulating all of that. So then the next time I, I used it, it actually came in like a mousse form. So that was better just to rub that on the scalp and not have to worry about, you know, all of the hair coming out. But um, I mean, the stuff worked. I've used it a couple of times myself. It's very minty feeling. It's kind of tingly on your scalp. And for anyone who thinks that their hair is thinning or they're going like in a premature balding thing, that might be something for them to try to, to stimulate those hair follicles before they, they completely quit working. 
So those are topical treatments. I know there's other ones out there. Minoxidil is probably one of the most famous ones that everybody you know, has commercials and stuff about, but I know that Rogaine was one. There was a couple other ones out there. Um, there is another thing called low level laser therapy. Ever heard of it? <laughs> Have you ever heard of red light therapy? Because that's also what it's called, <laughs> red light therapy. Yeah, so this is a very safe form. It's light and heat. It's a treatment there. It increases your blood flow and stimulates your metabolism. It's going to work in the catagen or telogen resting times of your hair so that when the production of your antigen hair starts to grow, it's supposed to help it grow a little bit uh, faster and thicker. Okay, it's effective for clients that experience genetic hair loss. So that means if you're losing hair from an illness or, you know, injury or a medication that you're taking, um, this is not going to work for you. This is only working for the clients that like, you know, they're inheriting their, their baldness from their father or their grandfather or something like that. That's when that one's going to come in and help. Um, have you ever seen those little fibers that you can like sprinkle on the hair? Kind of adds, adds hair to that. It's supposed to like help cover up bald spots and stuff like that. It comes in a little, little bottle and they're just like fibers and you just sprinkle them on. Okay, those things um, work. They'll just, they're temporary. They're very uh, made to like clean on to the ultra super fine baby hair just to make it look a little bit thicker. Sometimes it actually works better too if you shoot it with hairspray and kind of like glue them on there. It just sort of helps fill in the bare, bare spots. A lot of guys that have beards like to use these fibers because some of the beard area may be a little bit more sparse compared to some of the other beard areas. So a lot of these fibers are good, you know, to help kind of fill that in. They come in all different types of colors and you just shake it on. It's like a little, little thing of powder. You just kind of shake it on and the fibers fix to the hair strands and um, it's just temporary though. Like every time you shampoo or take a shower or something like that, you've got to re-put it on. Also with the fibers, have you seen the fibers that come in a spray can? They just like spray out. Yeah, I, I <laughs> it's really funny because I worked with this guy for a while and he uh, he was getting a little bit older. He was thinning in the back, you know, like in the crown area. It was his birthday. So as a joke, we went and bought him like all this stuff for supposedly like old people, you know. And we we got the, the spray can. So we sprayed it on his, his crown area. And, you know, standing a few feet away from him, it looked really good. Like, it looked really good. When he sat down the, in the barber chair and we walked over and looked at the top of his head, then we could tell that he had something on it. But, you know, from a distance, you couldn't really tell. So he was going to show his wife. She was working late that night. So he went home and he said he, he laid down on the bed and was waiting for her to get home from work. And we got, when he got up, it came off his hair and it was all over his bed, like all over his pillow. Like it did not stay in his hair. It came off. So he had to go and like wash his whole bed and everything because he didn't want his wife to come home and be like, you know, what the heck did you get all over the bed? So he had to wash it and everything. And so she never did get to see what it looked like. And he wouldn't let us do it again. We're, well, we'll spray some more on you. You can show your wife. And he was just like, no, 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 no. So that was, a, that was kind of fun there. Um, they also have some pills that you can take. Um, these pills, it's like an oral prescription that you have to get from your doctor. It's known as Finistride. It is approved by the FDA as a hair growth treatment, and it is sold under the brand name Propecia. Okay. There are successful hair growth, but there are side effects of weight gain and loss of sexual function for some people. So clients that remain in contact or they're taking this should be monitored closely by their physician. And if you have a client that is taking a, a prescription medication, then you should um, be cautious on doing any type of chemicals or any type of service other than just like, you know, a haircut that could possibly have a, a, uh, a reaction. So, you know, we do want to want to check into that. Um, there's also surgical solutions, like actual surgery itself. Um, someone can get a transplant 
Did you know you could transplant hair? I always thought that was kind of weird. When I hear, think of transplants, I think of someone getting like a liver or something. I don't think of someone like trans. Okay, so, or a graft. Sometimes I call it a graft. A G-R-A-F-T. Okay, a graft. A hair graft. So what they do is they take a small piece of hair bearing scalp from holes or slits from the sides or the back of the head and remove them and move them to holes or slits on the top of the head. So like if I have a bunch of hair growing back here, they're gonna make a little hole or a little slit. Take the scalp out that has the hair growing in it and like put it in areas that doesn't have the hair growing in it. Um, sometimes they do what's known as like a hair plug where basically they do the same thing, but they're taking the little pieces of hair, almost like a bulb, like you would plant, I don't know, like a tulip or something and they're just inserting them into your, their own hair follicles there for it to grow. So I've seen someone that has hair plugs before and it looks like they're only like the size of a, I don't know, maybe my pencil lead right here. And it's just like, you just poked a whole bunch of little holes in the top of someone's head, just put all these pieces of hair in there. And then the whole idea is because it's your, your own hair. So it's supposed to like take root and start growing. Now, if we took someone else's hair and put that into us, our body would reject it. And it would treat it like it was bacteria. And so it would get infected and our body would try to reject it and push it out and things like that. So um, this is why they use their own hair. I've seen someone that's had it then wore it and right at the occipital bone on a horizontal line, there was like scar that was just like a little line that went across like that. And they had taken all the, the scalp and the hair out and the transplant of it in the front. Um, it was growing. Uh, it was still, you had to be very careful with it. He wanted to get a cut because it was growing, but it wasn't thickening up. And so he, you know, you had to be careful when you were doing a haircut with it because you didn't want to pull it out or anything like that or cut too much. So it was, it was a little nerve wracking. Okay. You can have what's known as flap surgery where they take a large portion of hair bearing scalp from the sides or back of the head and move it to the balding area. So basically they cut a flap of your skin off and just move it and put it over where you need it. And there's also scalp reduction, which is a surgical removal of the scalp to reduce the size of the bald area. You combine it with a flap or a graft and it just helps with the hair's restoration. So if you're going to have surgery though, it's pretty important that you know they understand and you understand growth patterns, hairlines, you know, things like that so that it, it works well. If you plan on working in a doctor's office that deals with hair loss, um, those are some, some of the things you can do. There's other things out there, but those are the, the main ones, you know, that people do do. So is there any questions on anything? No, do we have good ideas for our wigs? Yeah. Okay.